All right, so as I said uh, last video, we're here in the garage. I got the rear mock-up together, mostly together. I got the engine sitting in it. Um, not completely, the rear mounts are in, so the engine is in position, um, it's level, but the front mounts are not uh, designed yet. I'll talk to you about why, we'll talk to you about the rear mock-up, talk about all kinds of stuff, a lot going on today. Um, but if you don't know, um, I'm building an all-wheel drive, hybrid, lightweight sports car BMW K1600 engine in the middle, electric axle up front, it's like an E-Ray Corvette basically, but it uses no hard tooling. It's flexible, so we're gonna accommodate different engine configurations, different bike motors, different hybrid systems, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I talked a lot last time about how this is a manual bent chassis now, and this is representative of that. Um, but yeah, I just got, we got a lot to talk about. I'm gonna to stick to the list here and uh, hopefully get through this pretty quick and I'll, I'll walk you around this, uh, this whole mock-up and some other parts I got. All right, so the basic project update. So the rear mock-up is here, obviously. Um, the upper uh, suspension mounts are on. I have to move the hoist to get the lower suspension mounts on. So this engine has to be mounted pretty much completely. It's gonna be supported on the bottom um, by a jack stand or something, but it has to be in position in the mock-up uh, for me to really continue on this. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the rear engine mounts that I do have on there are looking really good. Um, the stock exhaust showed up, so I ordered a set of K1600 headers. My engine didn't come with the exhaust. Or it did come with an intake manifold, but not an exhaust, whatever. Um, but I got those, they're like, you know, they're like my first headers. It's like the smallest, like, it's like a little toy. It's like the smallest headers I've ever seen in my life. But um, yeah, they obviously fit on the engine. And uh, they actually, so oh, there was a little process. Let me make sure I'm sticking to the, uh, okay, I'm sticking to the list here. So I mounted the engine initially in a certain position and the exhaust just kind of barely fit, the stock exhaust. I was really, really happy because I didn't think that was gonna happen. And then once I had the engine in here, it's like, forget 3D scanning. I have a mock-up in the actual engine here. So I was like, well, I have more space than I thought. So I moved the engine down about eight millimeters, if I remember right, and forward like 12 or 14, which is huge. And uh, now the stock exhaust fits really well. It goes right under a cross member back here, which is super important, super structural. They don't have to move that. Um, the engine, again, so the engine sits lower than it did before. It's closer to the firewall, which is great for weight distribution. And it's great for, um, mostly for, honestly, mostly for the differential. Because the space between that diff and the output shaft of the engine is super, super critical. So now that I had that extra like 12 mils, it's just huge. Um, I've done some other stuff here to, that I'll show you to address that too. But uh, yeah, so I got the drive shaft here. The, I'm gonna cut the yoke off that and get a flange on there to mount to this flexible coupling. Um, that's not a scalable solution, but it is a good solution for one prototype. And in the future, I'm gonna to have to figure out what kind of spine that is and all that kind of stuff to, uh, to sort that out. But for now, that's okay. Um, and yeah, so this whole, just as a side note, this, mock, this whole mock-up is a lot stronger than I thought it would be. It's been supporting the engine pretty nicely, um, just with plastic mounts. I noticed it was flexing a little bit when I came in here, but that's just the kind of the, um, this uh, jack shine I got from Harbor Freight sagging a little bit. Rather Harbor Freight, tractor supply sagging a little bit, but, um, not a big deal, uh, nothing was broken. So just gonna kinda straighten that stuff back up, get the front engine mounts figured out. I'll talk about those just in a second. Actually, let's open a box and I'll uh, I'll show you what is going on with the front engine mount. And I guess we'll also show you a little bit of CAD too. So let me just go over this engine mounting situation uh, with you guys. So um, it's a motorcycle engine. They never intended it to go in a car. The rear mounts are fine. The front mounts, not so much. It's just in a weird spot. Um, it needs a cross member, but there's no good place to put it. So uh, let me let me show you my solution here. So now we're opening up this uh, box. It's from Oshkut. So the whole chassis, this mock-up is sponsored by Senkut Sen. I'm really, really thankful that they're sponsoring this whole, uh, whole mock-up and pieces of this project. Oshkut is not sponsoring this, but I use Oshkut a lot. You should use them. Um, can't recommend them uh, enough. Um, this is just a steel bar that it goes in between the headers and the engine block. And uh, I know this sounds kind of weird, but uh, it makes a lot of sense. So the engine mounts 
are like right there, um, the two I'm going to use. So that's a really good spot for it. Um, you know, I think it should be steel. I guess it could be aluminum. I don't, I'm, you know, again, math, not an engineer. It's going to be a stainless steel tube. The, the, the prototype is just uh, regular steel, just as a um, for mock up purposes. But put that across. And then, so that'll just be bolted in. So to remove the engine, you have to remove the mounts from the engine and then remove that actual mounting bar. So again, it seems a little unorthodox. It just kind of is what it is. Um, if I'm sure if you guys had the 3D scan or something, I'm kind of half joking, kind of half not joking about this. If you guys had these scan all the information, you could maybe come up with something better. Um, but in terms of the cost of the milled engine mounts and the cost of this little bar that goes there, it's a pretty good solution. So I might use some of the other engine mounts to kind of support this thing side to side, but uh, that's what I'm going with for now. So that's how that's all gonna work. Other small stuff in that region. So the exhaust, this mock-up is not complete. Um, so there are, intentionally so. So there are some kind of x brace cross beams that go under this rear part of the mock-up that I have not finalized a design of yet for this reason. Um, I'm pretty sure the exhaust is going to hit them, so I have to adjust those um, to get those out of the way. Not a huge deal. I'm happy with the way the exhaust fits now. I'm not going to like you know move this engine anymore because um, I'm just going to change those. Uh, I haven't ordered them or anything. So and then I think I'll get those mocked up in MDF like I did this, and then mount them once I know that I have them right. Um, and then other stuff. Another thing with the engine back here is that it's now slightly off center. So it just fits really nicely in the spot that I have it in now, where it's like the output is like a quarter inch off to the driver's side. Um, and I guess it's like, you know, not pleasing my autism or whatever, but the CV axles will just take up that, um, that difference and it'll all be fine. So there's a lot of good reasons to do it. I'm sure people watching will be upset that <laughs> just knowing that the dip's not perfectly centered, but it's whatever. It's it works really nicely at where it is right now, so that's where it's gonna stay. Moving a little further back in the car, I was using a BMW small case diff forever in this thing. I thought that was gonna be the ideal differential for this car. Um, it's small. It's you know it's not light, but it's <laughs> I guess for a differential, it's kind of is what it is. But um, just fighting with me the whole way in. You know, I lifted this thing in here. I made a mount for it. And, uh, you know, a lot of different engines just mount in funny ways. And uh, I thought this one was going to mount good. It actually has more mounts than your average diff. It just doesn't want to live there, though. So um, I could go into really deep reasons why that is. Um, but I'm just not going to because uh, it's the diff's not happy. I'm not happy with it. I'm going with something else for a lot of good reasons. Um, so the new diff, I'll put up a video of me opening the box on it now. This is like the fifth differential that poor UPS driver has delivered to my ass in like the past year. But uh, it's a regular diff. Well, it's not a regular. It's a diff out of an E90, I think an early XI E90. The input flange is important. It's hooks right up to the guibo or the flexible coupling, which saved me a bunch of space between the engine. So, so before, I would have to have the small case diff on adapter plate and then the adapter plate would hook up to the flexible coupling, and then I would have to have the flange off the engine hook up to that. Just taking up space, like that adapter between the uh, diff and the uh, flexible coupling. This new diff, the flexible coupling hooks up right to it. I'm already using E90 flexible couplings front and rear. Very, very convenient. Um, saves me space in there. So I don't have to have this, saves me space and money. I don't have to have this adapter anymore. Um, so I'm just really happy with that. Um, I'll have to scan that and it mounts a lot nicer. That's like the big thing. Um, so I'll have to sort all that stuff out, um, but that's going well. Again, I just unboxed that thing, so I have to do a bunch of work with it. But um, yeah, I, I switched diffs is, is the bottom line. So yeah, next things, um, straight off the list a little bit, little bit there. So I'm just coming back into it here. Um, I have to mock up all the engine mounts if I didn't say this already. So rears are in, fronts have to go in, have to do that. Um, with the funny mounting solution that I have. Um, once that's in place, I can get this hoist out of here. I'll still support the bottom of the engine with something. Get the hoist out, then I can mount the uh, rear suspension. I actually have the arms in here. Um, then I can get the diff in there, mock up the axles, 
figure out the rear suspension. So that's the whole, it's like, you know, once you solve one problem on this vehicle, I've said this before, you, um, you get yourself into solving other problems, just kind of how it works. Um, so yeah, that's one of the next steps in the rear mock-up. Um, and yeah, after that, it's a bunch of all the little stuff. So I mean, that'll be like nice <laughs> having the suspension and stuff figured out, but then I have to do radiators, intake, um, fuel tank, that kind of stuff. So, you know, just one thing after another kind of, but getting close, getting really close. And I'm really happy to have the mock-up. So now I'm going to go up into some updates in CAD because I've been doing a lot in CAD. And um, uh, just, yeah, I, I don't like sharing a lot of CAD, obviously, I've said before, but unavoidable here. Um, sorry if it's boring. I'll try to keep it as short as I can. I'll stick the list pretty tight here. So the structure of the fixed doors is complete, and they match the chassis. So the door sills, so I have fixed doors. The sill of the door has to take a person's weight because they're using it to climb in and out. They have to be strong. They basically have to be part of the chassis. Um, figuring out that and having the door structure mount to that is pretty tricky, but I figured it out finally. Um, so that uh, is, I'm just going through that. Um, do the A-pillar mounting. So I, I probably worked on the A-pillar more than anything else in this vehicle. Originally, it was like a 3D printed mount. Then it was machined. Then I mandrel bent the A-pillar and it mounted with just some brackets. And I finally figured out it's pretty elegant where it just uses some brackets. It's pretty elegant. It's like, okay. Um, so that's as cheap as can be. That all works. Um, then a windshield will mount up to that. Might have some other mounting points. Probably one in the middle and the bottom for the windshield. Um, but that's all working out. Um, the bench chassis rails have most of the holes they need. Um, again, I'm going to try to put as many holes as I can in there. I'm sure that there'll be some I can't account for that I'm going to forget, but um, getting really close on that front. Um, probably a few more for stuff like radiator brackets and other little stuff, but getting really close there. And yeah, I can't um, order those rails until I have that done. So uh, I just got to figure out where all the little holes go. So um, getting really close though, and uh, that should be pretty exciting once those show up or when I pick them up or whatever, whatever happens, um, we'll see. The other one final CAD note is that I've started a little bit of interior work too. Um, so it's still some little stuff I have to do, um, but since the doors are in place, I can finally start to think about what those panels are gonna look like, how they're gonna mount, what the materiality is gonna be. Um, I have to finish up the steering column mounting still because the it's just tricky to do it in the mock-up the way I designed it. Um, it's hard to simulate the actual mounting, but uh, definitely on the right axis, really, really close. Um, I just have to order maybe another tube to figure that out in the mock-up inside. But uh, yeah, again, just really close in the, uh, in the interior stuff. So probably more on that next time. So yeah, I probably forgot some stuff, but that's... Uh, most of what's getting done here. So again, I'm going to be working on this right after I finish this video. But um, there's more suspension updates coming soon. I think I feel like I mentioned that every video. It's just like I feel like I'm going to go into it and then it's other stuff I have to figure out. Um, so yeah, I'll figure out if I need push rods in the back once this is all together. It looks like I can mock the axles, see how much space I have there. Probably pretty tight, but hopefully I don't need push rods. Um, need to make the front suspension manufacturable. It works right now. I just don't want to mill that huge piece out. The fork, I don't want to mill that. I want to get it in a couple pieces so it's cheaper. Um, I need to buy those coilovers too. I need to figure out the ideal kind of eye-to-eye -eye distance on those and, uh, and order them, which I'm not looking forward to. It's going to be expensive. Um, then after that, to do more body mounting. So I'm, I, I'm at the phase where I know that the, where the chassis is going to be. So um, I have to mount all the body work, which is not fun at all. Um, but, you know, there's an elegant way to do it. And I'm going to find out how. So this decision is to make there like what 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 body panels are combined. Is the hood one big piece? Is the rear clamshell one big piece? All kinds of stuff like that. Just stuff to figure out. You know how does it segment when you print it? There's endless stuff like that. And then there's more mechanical stuff. So next time, probably not next time. This is just in the future. I know I'm going to have to do it. Once I have the engine fixed here, I can start figuring out the shifter. Which means like I can cut a hole for the shifter in the center tunnel, which means I can figure out the interior around it. And then uh, I can figure out what else is going to the tunnel, because I know where the shifter linkage is going to be. So I, if I want to put stuff in there, i got to figure that out. Um, then i got to figure out where the 12-volt battery is going to be, the electronics. Oh, it's just like, you know, I've talked about it before, but I'm just kind of recapping it. Um, but yeah, 
that's mostly it for this video. Again, if you guys have any feedback or anything like that on what's going on here, uh, feel free to leave a comment or read all the comments, send me an email, whatever. Um, again, I don't kind of purport to be like an expert car designer or anything. This is my first time doing it. So um, yeah, any, any advice anyone can offer me, I'm very happy to listen to. So yeah, that's it for now, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.